Praise the Lord. Here at Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church, we want to welcome you to Focus Fridays. Friday, November the 18th at 7 p.m., we will have a guest speaker, Elder Timothy Tipton from Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple. We will be having our service here at Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church at 3771 Reading Road, where our pastor is the Suffragan Bishop Charles L. Smith. We welcome you out. Friday, November the 18th at 7 p.m. And praise the Lord with us. Hallelujah. All right. At this time, we'll turn the service into our hands for our wonderful Bishop Charles L. Smith. Let's greet him by saying, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Here at Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church, we want to welcome you to Focus Fridays. Friday, November the 18th at 7 p.m., we will have a guest speaker, Elder Timothy Tipton from Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple. We will be having our service here at Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church at 3771 Reading Road, where our pastor is the Suffragan Bishop Charles L. Smith. We welcome you out Friday, November the 18th at 7 p.m. And praise the Lord with us. Amen. Grab your Bibles and your smartphones. And all those other things you got, amen, to read scriptures with. We're going to go to the book of, the book of Luke, <laughs> chapter 17. And we're going to read there, verse 15 through 19, the book of Luke. Chapter 17, verse 15 through 19. Are you ready? Let us begin reading. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, 
turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Sunday scripture text is verse 15 and verse 16, from which we will take our thought today. Verse 15 said, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And the subject today is give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Lord with a grateful heart. Hallelujah. We do not want God to do great and wonderful things for us, and we fail to give him thanks. My father taught me when I was a young man, if somebody does something good for you, make sure that you tell them thanks. And I thought that was good advice. Hallelujah. And he said, if you're, they're good to you, if they're good to you, and they give you gifts or whatever they do for you, always tell them thanks. Hallelujah. Don't that sound like a plan? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But in this lesson that we're going to give you today, there were nine, nine men who did not give thanks. Hallelujah. And these nine men went on their way and went to show themselves to the priest. But one of them, hallelujah, one man out of ten men said, I cannot leave and go my show myself to the priest without giving thanks to the one that healed me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm healed, but I got to give him some thanks. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have leprosy no more, but I got to give him some thanks. I'm glad that I'm well, but I got to give him some thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I would still be in the condition that I'm in if I hadn't got a healing from the Lord. Oh, I feel it in my soul. I would still be bound by sickness and disease if he hadn't brought me out. I still wouldn't be able to function like I need to if God had not healed me. Hallelujah. How can I just go back to business as usual and go back to the normal things that I do in my life and fail to give the God of heaven thanks for his great healings and deliverances that he has given to his people. Hallelujah. 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 He healed 
ten lepers. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 17, verse 11, it said, It came to pass that he went to Jerusalem and he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Hallelujah. It's in the same chapter. I'm reading from verse 11 through 14. Hallelujah. He went to Jerusalem, but he passed through Samaria. Hallelujah. So why did the writer put that in there? Because on the ordinary route, of a Jew from the north to the south or from the south to the north, they never went through Samaria. Now why didn't they go through Samaria? I said, we don't like those people that are in Samaria. Matter of fact, we hate them. We don't want no contact with them. We don't even want to say hi or how you doing or how your family getting along. We don't bother. We don't bother them. We have no contact with them. But Jesus uh, was different. Hallelujah. He didn't care whether you was a Samaritan or a Jew or white or black or whatever color you was. He loved all people and he still loves all the people. He didn't care whether you had money or no money. He didn't care whether you were educated or uneducated. Jesus loved people. People. I got to go see about some people. And I believe because he was God, he knew that these ten lepers would be in a village where he was passing through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Bible said he went right down through the middle of Samaria. Hallelujah. And Galilee. When he entered into a certain village, he met ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off and lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were supposed to cry out, unclean, unclean. I'm a leper, unclean. Don't come near me, I'm unclean. They had to cover up their face and cover up their lip. They had to shave their head. There was nobody that was supposed to come near them. They said, Lord, please, please, Lord. We don't like this kind of life. We have to be banished from society. We have to live outside of the camp. We can't even go see our families and our relatives. We have to stay in the leper colony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isolation is a terrible thing. That's why we need to come to church more. and We need to have more in-person services where we can have fellowship one with another. Because when you sit in your house all the time, it seems like the walls start closing in on you. You try TV, and that's something I saw before. That's something I don't want. And all them walls every day just look like they keep coming in closer and closer. And you find yourself isolated, and the devil begins to work on your mind. Hallelujah. We need each other. We need fellowship. Hallelujah. The only fellowship that these ten lepers had was people that were just like them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
They said, Lord, Master, Jesus, have mercy on us. Can you do something to help us? Hallelujah. Can you show some of your great mercy and love on us so that we do not have to stay in this situation all of our lives? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus said to them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus is wonderful. And I want to give a shout out for Jesus today. <laughs> If you read the background of this sermon, you would understand I, ain't going, I don't have time to go through everything in Leviticus, but oh, shut up. Jesus bypassed isolation. He bypassed all the things that they had to do under the law, all the sacrifices, all the hyssop, all the killing of the bird, all the isolation, seven days and then come back and I'll see if you're still clean in seven days. All the sacrifices, trespass offering, sin offering, burnt offering had to be offered for the leper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to get stuck on one thing, but if you are here today and you did not have to go to the hospital or you went to the hospital but came back home from the hospital, okay. Hallelujah. You need to thank the Lord with a grateful heart that you will be able to bypass death and come back to the house of God. Woo! Shut up. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. I'm uh, bypassing the law. I'm bypassing your disease. I'm bypassing everything that you're supposed to have to do. I'm giving you grace. I'm giving you strength. I'm giving you power. All I got to do is speak the word. And you can be healed. Hallelujah. 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 I can do something for these lepers that nobody else can do. I can heal them through their obedience to what I have told them. Hallelujah. They didn't question what the Lord said. They didn't say, well, I don't think we should do that. But when they got it in their mind, he is giving us a solution that gets me away from all the red tape, gets me away from all the doctor's visits, gets me away from all the things that I might have to go through. Just go to the priest. Go to the man of God and show yourself to him. Let him see that you are clean. Let him see that you don't have leprosy anymore. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And the Bible said they were cleansed as they went. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shana Utama Shana. Jesus did something for them that nobody else could do. He bypassed all the red tape. He went beyond all of the sacrifices and the two birds. One had to be killed and the other had to dip in blood and hiss up and all of those things. And said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible said, <laughs> They were cleansed. Three words. They left the village, they left where they were and started out for to show themselves to the priest. Now I want you to catch this. They have boils, they have sores, Hmm. They have places that are all white and the hair has turned white inside of the scar or the sore. Hallelujah. Some of them, some of them, hallelujah, are so weak they cannot hardly walk. Hallelujah. But Jesus didn't say, go to the priest and take a bath. He didn't say go to the priest and get some sacrifices made for you. Don't, yeah, shut up. Jesus was saying, I'm bypassing all that other red tape and all that other stuff that they're telling you to do. I'm bypassing this and I'm saying, be ye healed. Ooh. Hallelujah. And when they turned to go to the priest, their leprosy left them immediately. Not seven days, not 12 days, but immediately. Jesus performed a miracle on those 10 lepers. They had it, and when they got ready to go to the priest, they were cleansed from it. Look at my hands. They look new. Look at my feet, and they did too. Ever since that wonderful day, my soul has been satisfied. I had it, but now I don't have it. I had it before Jesus come, but when I obeyed what he told me to do, oh, hallelujah, it went away. It disappeared, church. I don't believe it was no two weeks and three weeks and four weeks before it went away. I believe he decreed it. It was so. He sent his word. He healed them. Immediately. They all should have turned around. and said, I can't leave Jesus until I told him thanks. 
I, I, I want to go get my decoration that I am clean, but uh, before I leave for all that process of being declared clean by the priest, I got to go back to the one that made me clean. And I got to tell him something. <laughs> Because I'm not just giving thanks, but I'm giving thanks out of a grateful heart. I looked up what the heart was. The heart is the center of all of our emotions, all of our feelings. It's something that is pure, that comes out of the heart, and it's in our mind. I'm declaring, Lord God, that you have did this. I'm giving you thanks for what you have done. If you had not helped me, I would not even have got it. Hallelujah. I ain't playing games. I ain't talking about thank you, thank you, thank you without meaning something about it. But I'm thanking you from the bottom of my heart. I don't know what I would have done without you. I don't know how I would have been healed without you. He shot out. Said I gotta go back and tell him things. Hallelujah. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice. <laughs> He didn't just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You are very good to me, Lord. Thank you. Can I use my preaching voice? He said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your mighty acts. Thank you for your excellent greatness. Thank you for your healing. Woo! You are my healer. You are my deliverer. You are my savior. You are my helper. You are my soon coming king. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I ain't playing games. I love you. I'm not trying to get some brownie points. I love you. I'm not trying to get something special from you. I love you for who you are. I love you for what you do. I love you for how you give me back my health and strength. I love you. I love you. I love you. Ata kilia sahata komuni anamata. I love you, Lord. I'm not going to take it back. I know Dr. So-and-so did what he wanted to do. I know the hospital did what it wanted to do. I know the pharmacy did what it wanted to do. But if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Where would I be? I wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for you. I wouldn't be sitting here looking good and smiling 
and wave my hand if you wasn't good. They've been had a service for me by this time. But the Lord said no. Not today. I'm going to give them some more time to give me things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He not only glorified him with a loud voice, but he fell on his face at his feet mm. and gave him thanks. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm glad that I don't have to rent my clothes anymore. I'm glad, Lord, that I don't have to shave my head and make it bald. I'm glad, Lord, that I don't have to wear a mask over my upper lip so the contamination of what I had don't get on other people. Hallelujah. And I sure enough don't have to cry, unclean, unclean. Because when the Lord makes you clean, you're clean. He don't do a halfway job. He didn't just heal half of him and let the other half go. He didn't do all the things that was only half done. But when, remember this, please remember this. When God does a job, he does it good. He don't half do it. They partly do it, one third do it, two thirds do it, but when he makes you whole, he does a good job. Hallelujah. I don't have to worry about leprosy coming back on me again. <laughs> uh, I thought I was healed, but it came back. No. If God heals it, it's healed. Do you all believe me today? If God heals it, it's gone. Don't look for it. Don't say, I think it's going to come back. It ain't coming back. If God heals. Hallelujah. He gave God things. Say, Lord, I just want to thank you for being so good to me. I don't have to dwell by myself no longer. I can fellowship with people. I can go back and see my family. I can see my little children. Hallelujah. I don't have to worry about isolation outside the camp anymore, but I can go back into society because you have healed me. Hallelujah. I can return to normal life again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I just want to thank you for being so good to me. Hallelujah. 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 You fed me when I was hungry. You clothed me when I was naked. 
You were a shelter in the time of storm. When the adversary came against my soul, it was you that lifted up a standard against him and told the devil to back off and leave them alone. They belong to me. Back up, devil. Get out of the way, Satan. Leave my people alone. These are my children. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he was a Samaritan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he was a Samaritan. Hallelujah. But Jesus went through the midst of Samaria to meet him. He did not talk about all the political and racial issues that were going on. He didn't talk about the hatred that was there. But he reached out to his own people who were the nine and he reached out to a person that was a stranger. Stranger, you can be healed. Jews, you can be healed. Whoever I want to heal, I can heal. Maybe you don't go to church like you ought to, but I can heal you. Maybe you're not saved like they are, but I can heal you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he was a Samaritan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I must move on. I've had too much praise and worship so far. <laughs> Excuse me, please. I'm getting ready for Thanksgiving, y'all. <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me. Woo. I don't want to lose my praise. I don't, I don't want God to do many things for me and my family and my church, and I don't thank him. I, I don't want to let him just be indebted to me, but I want to give him some thanks out of a grateful heart. Lord, I'm talking to you not with just words, not with cliches, not with things that I know how to do, but Lord, this is coming from my heart. In my heart, I thank you. In my mind, I thank you. In my hand, I thank you. In my feet, I thank you. Ah. I just want to thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With all that in me is, I want to thank you. With all the resources that I have available to me, my hands, my feet, my voice, my tongue. I just want to thank you. Hallelujah. I don't care what them other nine people did. I hope they'll catch the vision one day. And turn around and come back and give Jesus some thanks for doing something for them that no one else could do for bypassing all the red tape. 
all the ceremonialism. All he said was, go show yourself to the priest. And when they turned around and they looked at their hands, their hands looked new. They looked at their feet and they did too. And ever since that wonderful day, that leprosy never came back and never settled on them again. Hallelujah. Jesus answering said, But where are the nine? Hallelujah. Verse 17 and 18. Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? Didn't I cleanse ten people? Wasn't this man one of them ten people that I cleansed? But where are the nine? Well, I'll tell you where they're at. They're on the way to see the priest. They're waiting on him to tell them they're clean. And then they're going right back to what they did as business of you. If I just get up out of this bed, y'all ain't going to have to worry about me. I will get baptized in Jesus' name. I will get the gift of a Holy Ghost. I will live a holy life. And then they come back and take all the tubes out and take all the, uh, art, the uh, machines off of them. And they get the feeling real good. Say, you going to go to church with me today? Nah. <laughs> well, didn't God raise you up? Yep. Didn't he give you back your health and strength? Yep. Well, why ain't you going to church? Oh, I got things to do. And I got people to see. What? What kind of answer is that? They love the world more than they love Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, but where are the nine? And I wrote down in my notes that if this is an indication of the mindset of the people, only, hallelujah, 10% of the people actually give God the thanks that is due to him. 90% just soak up all of his blessing. Soak up all of his mercy. Soak up all of his healing. And go on their way. And never ever think about, I should give him some thing. Hallelujah. So even as we live today, 90% of the people have promised God certain things when they were sick. But after they got healed, they forgot about it. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to see the priest. Why are you going? I want him to tell me that I'm clean. Well, if you can't see you're clean now, and all the leprosy that disappeared out of your body. Why do you have to go to the priest? You can be obedient to Jesus because that's what he told you to do. But he's going to tell you the same thing that already happened to you. <laughs> oh, Lord. So I don't know what happened to the pastor. He done went wild. No, no, no. 
I have a good mind. I have a sound mind. I am not crazy. <laughs> But I don't understand, even in the scriptures, how nine other people could have got the same blessing as one man, but only one came back to give him thanks. Hallelujah. Verse 18, there was not found, return to give glory, save this stranger. He called the Samaritan a stranger. And Jesus said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Your faith is kicking in now. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Hallelujah. Now I want to explain what that means. This man had a physical condition but he also had a spiritual condition. And as he was praising God and giving him thanks and honoring the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he began to believe on him, not only as a healer, but as a deliverer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Jesus doesn't say this, and Luke doesn't write it, but he thought within his heart, I want thus and so from God, as well as healing of my leprosy. And the Bible said he was made whole. W-H-O-L-E which means he was healed spiritually and he was healed physically. Got it? Faith made him whole continually, both spiritually and physically. Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, believing on him, not only as a healer, but as a Messiah and as the one that Israel was looking for. His faith. His faith in Jesus healed him spiritually. Hallelujah. Mr. Samaritan, I'm not asking you to leave Samaria. Rise up. Go your way. And tell everybody. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere. Go tell everybody. I know somebody that can help you. I know somebody that can heal you. I know somebody that can save you. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah, church. This man was made whole. All right. I got a few more minutes. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Where, where's your flags at? <laughs> she got some flags. Some got tambourines, some got balloons. Pom pom. Yeah, we got some pom pom. Yeah. I heard I heard the sound of a tambourine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our last sir, our last sir, uh, subject or the final part of the message is finally be thankful unto him and we're going to go to Psalm 100 
And we're going to do two or three verses there. Psalm 100. You all can probably quote it by heart. I know some behind me can. I know they can. They wrote songs about it. All right. I'm just going to read verse 4 and 5. And it said, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And enter into his courts with praise. Now that doesn't sound maybe... Uh, if you're not familiar with worship and praise and all of those things, it mustn't sound, you know, like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? You're supposed to have a praise on your lips when you come in. Oh, I hope the praise team does good. No, I hope I can help them do good because I am going to praise on my lips. And I want joy in my heart. And I want thanksgiving to be put on the plate for all of this. Hallelujah. Enter into his gates with, say it, thanksgiving. Not what happened all week long. Not what I went and done before I got here. Not about my breakfast. Not about my coffee. Not about the unsafe drivers on the road. I want to come into Zion, into this place that has been dedicated to God, that is our place of worship with thanksgiving and praise. Woo, Shana. No sad tale. No hung down lips. Hallelujah. Even in a bad time, God is still good. Even when I'm crying, he's still good. When I'm sad, he's still good. When I can't make it, he's still good. When I got pain in my body, he's still good. Ooh, ooh, ooh. He's still good. He's still good. Come into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Let his name be spread abroad in the congregation. Let the name of Jesus take preeminence over everybody else's name. Let the glory go to the Lord. Let the glory go to the one who has done what he did for us. Hallelujah. Why? For the Lord, my Lord, and your Lord, he's good. He's good. He's good. Well, he let all this stuff happen to me. He's still good. If I've been sick, he's still good. You don't know what I've been through, honey. No, I don't know what you've been through, honey. But I still know that God is good. Can I get a witness? Good. And his truth endureth 
to all generations. Days will come and days will go. Seasons will change. Time will change. But Jesus Christ is the same. Both today and yesterday and today and forever. People change, but he don't change. He still loves you. Even if you're hurting in your body and you don't know what's going to happen, he still loves you with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. He said, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. I'm with you on the mountaintop and I'm with you in the valley. I'm with you when you're in trouble and I'm with you when you are shouting up and down in the church. I'm with you at both times. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I love you too much to leave you. You're Oh, shut up. You're important to me. Hallelujah. You're important to me. I love my children. Hallelujah. 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 Be thankful to him. And bless his name. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeem. Lord, help me always to do the things that please you. I give you all of the honor I give you all of the glory. I give you all of the praise. It all belongs to you. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. Have a smile upon you. Praise the Lord. Here at Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church, we want to welcome you to Focus Fridays. Friday, November the 18th at 7 p.m., we will have a guest speaker, Elder Timothy Tipton from Greater Emmanuel Apostolic Temple. We will be having our service here at Zion Temple First Pentecostal Church at 3771 Reading Road, where our pastor is the Suffragan Bishop Charles L. Smith. We welcome you out Friday, November the 18th at 7 p.m. And praise the Lord with us. <laughs>